YouTubers and various spam bots of the internet. I am bored of the nice and we're playing Depression Quest. Still. Um, this is like a... It's more like a novel type thing. It's like a choose your own adventure, except... Well, you can't always choose it. Which, you'll, you'll see what I mean if you haven't been following. Um, but yeah, I thought this was... It looked like a pretty interesting game. I think I forgot to mention in the first episode that it's available on Steam, but that'll be in the description, so... Um... Uh... But yeah, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> it's a glaringly sunny Monday, and one of the few days that your brother Malcolm is in town, and free long enough for you two to actually see each other. You have a dental appointment th that day, but you make plans for him to pick you up afterwards. Your appointment takes a little longer than expected because your dentist tells you that you've started grinding your teeth in your sleep to a worrying degree. Given how nearly everything in your life has been feeling enormous and stressful lately, this doesn't come as a surprise to you. He suggests that you try to reduce your stress levels and fits you for a night guard. It feels awkward and too big for your mouth, and you feel embarrassed looking at your puffed out face in the mirror with it in. You finish up the appointment in a hurry and leave about a half hour, half an hour overdue for meeting your always punctual brother in the parking lot. I've been having troubles reading. Jeez. You finish up as quickly as possible and leave a building to scan the parking lot for your brother's car, but you don't see his old Civic anywhere. You pass by a blue Camaro and jump as it beeps at you, causing you to jump in surprise. Yeah, you just said that. It takes you a moment for you to realize it, but it's Malcolm in the driver's seat. You hop in the passenger seat and compliment him on his new ride, and he mentions that there's a perk of a promotion he's recently obtained at work. He starts telling you about how much more money he's making, how his career is really taking off, and how he's starting to look at houses with his wife soon. You clutch the bag container with the night guard in your hand and feel yourself clench your teeth as you think of your crummy apartment and how long it's been since you've been able to take a day off work without having to worry about making ends meet. He's only two years older than you, and it feels like he's eons ahead of you in every other aspect of your lives. So, he asks, how did, you, how did your appointment go? Did you get drilled full of holes or what? A sense of shame creeps over you. Laugh about your dorky night guard. <laughs> Tell him about the night guard and why you needed it. Tell him it was routine cleaning. Tell him about your gr tooth grinding problem and not the stress causing it. Yeah. The dentist said I'm apparently grinding my teeth too much when I sleep. Oh, Malcolm replies. Been stressed out lately, kiddo? Deciding that you don't really want to go into it, you tell him that you don't think that's the case, and it's probably just a random thing. He doesn't pry farther, and be instead begins reminiscing with you about the time you chipped a baby tooth because he accidentally knocked you over once. You go out for dinner and catch up on things, but you still feel somewhat distracted by the gnawing anxiety in the back of your mind. Though you enjoy your brother's company, you still feel like you want nothing more than to go home and hide from the world tonight. It becomes hard for you to try to stuff all your horrible feelings down and go emotionless when someone like the dentist can see a fraction of what goes on inside your head. It leaves you feeling embarrassed and weak and you hate yourself for feeling this way. You wonder if you're really fooling anyone into thinking you're a normal person and when you wonder, then you wonder if your brother knows and is hanging out with you out of pity tonight. After he drops you back off of your apartment, you throw the night guard out. You can't even stand to look at the thing. Man. dry Sunday morning. You grab your morning coffee and scoot your rapidly growing kitten off your office chair. Despite a protest, sit down at your desk to check your email. A new message pops up in your inbox almost as soon as you do. It's from Amanda and she remembers your meeting in the cafe, awkwardly bringing up her feeling, your feelings to her. Hey buddy. <laughs> hey, sorry it's been a few weeks. I meant to get this to you sooner, but it took a while for me to get hold of my folks back home. Dad told me to say hi, by the way. Anyway, I remember what we talked about the last time I saw you, and I hope you were insulted, but I asked my mom for the number of her therapist. Don't worry, I didn't tell her who it was for. I think she's worried about me now, though. <laughs> anyway, the number is blah 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 blah. It's a really good office. You should look into it. Talking to someone never hurts. I'm a little dyslexic when it comes to numbers, so I'm not even going to try to read it. If you're worried about money, don't be. They're one of the few that has a really good sliding scale fee system and won't charge you what you can't afford. I hope you're feeling better. It was really nice to see you again. Hey. Uh, I wish the therapist's office here on a sliding scale. It's still early enough that you can call and make an appointment today. Your kitten curls up in your lap as you consider what to do. Well, crap. Now your cat's in your lap, so I guess you can't get up now, can you? Call therapist number. 
Try your luck and call the number, even though maybe it's out of touch with someone makes you anxious. Sleep on it, see how you're feeling in the morning. Close the- oh, no, 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 god dang it. <laughs> they did a good job of showing the sense of total lack of motivation and total frustration with your freaking lack of motivation. And because if you sleep on it, wake up in the morning, you're not going to call the therapist. But I'm going to try it anyway. The thought of picking up the phone and calling someone about this right now is overwhelming. Sure you're having a hard time lately and the motivation issues, but are you really in need of therapy? Shouldn't you be able to just get over it yourself? What if they put you on med medication that makes you feel like a zombie? What if you go and the therapist looks down on you? That's... it's their job to do exactly the opposite of that. What will I have to think about this? I'm trying to think about all these things that one at once makes it feel like a very big deal. And you decide to take your time on it think on it. The rest of the day passes quickly and then I give a hard time trying to sleep because your brain is too busy thinking about all these things and imagining all the ways it could go horribly wrong. The next morning you check your email again with blurry eyes and a mewing kitten. <laughs> okay, blurry eyes and a mewing kitten. Man's email is still there, seemingly waiting for you. You are no more to sigh than you were yesterday. What now? Just call already. Okay. Call it! Call it! Call it! God dang it. Oh. You read through Amanda's email two or three times and sit and stare at your computer for a while. While the memory of that uncomfortable conversation makes you feel newly embarrassed and self-conscious, part of you is also encouraged by the fact that she cared enough to get back to you at all. Sitting in front of your computer, you start to question things like whether or not Amanda sent you this number out of pity or perhaps some sense of obligation after listening to you. You question her motives and the validity of her concern and whether or not you think seeing a therapist would even be helpful. Yeah, almost unconsciously, you reach for your phone before you realize what's happening, you're listening to the therapist's line read. Before you can bring yourself to hang up, you're listening to the slightly clinical but not unpleasant voice of the recep receptionist asking how she can help you. Uh, I... I'd like to make an appointment with the, the doctor. You managed to stammer out. The question is quick and not nearly as unpleasant as you're fearing, and quicker than you can say, Fridge and slip, you've scheduled an appointment. Quicker than you realize, appointment day rolls around. What do you do? Go to the therapist's office. Oh, come on. Come on, man. <sighs> Alright. I'm still- I'm, I haven't given up. We're, we're going. You have your first session with your new therapist, Dr. Susan Melville. A tall woman in her mid-40s with a disarming demeanor and patient eyes with the start of- the... Oh. The slightest smile lines. She makes you feel comfortable fairly easily, easily, which is a pleasant surprise after all of your anxiety over the appointment. As you leave, you make a second appointment. You're still skeptical, skeptical about all of this, but you figure you might as well see where this goes. The hardest part, it seems, was taking the first step. You're still not sure if and how you're going to tell your family or your partner, but you figure you'll deal with that when the time comes. Either way, you feel relieved that you managed to see this through instead of becoming paralyzed and worried over it. Even if nothing comes of it, you did something you said you would instead of flaking out or running away. You're emotionally exhaust exhausted when you get home and collapse into bed. You sleep better that night than you have in a week, and you're not sure if it is because you're so tired when you got home or if it's because of the therapist. <clears throat> okay, my, my, uh, my little depression scale went up a notch. I'm not not in a constant state of lethargy anymore or anything. Uh, you spend some time on a therapist's couch, you're having difficulty finding the motivation to continue going to your ses to bleh, sessions. Again, I can't freaking talk. I'm not currently taking medication. Oh, that looks really soft. Okay, it's early on a Wednesday morning. That's where we'll pick back up in the next episode. So, bye-bye.